everybody in the world makes mistakes. And that is also true in the reptile keeping hobby. And because of all the trolls that are out there nowadays, a lot of people are afraid to ask for help on the internet. So in today's video, I'm going to be listing some common mistakes made by reptile keepers and some ways to fix it. My name is Pierce LaValle, this is Pierce's Planet, stick around. Everybody and welcome back to the channel. I hope you all are doing amazing. I am here with my spotted python, Simon, and we are here to talk about some common mistakes that are made in the reptile keeping hobby. I decided to make this video today because I know there's a lot of trolls out there and I know that a lot of people are afraid to, to ask questions or to, to tell people about their mistakes for fear that they're gonna get made fun of or cyber bullied. So I just wanted to make this video today to try to kind of help some people out without them having to ask. So let's just get straight into the list. So number five on the list is over handling. And I know that's probably one that you probably didn't expect. And I know that I'm saying that as I'm holding Simon here, I know. Hypocrite status, right? What are you looking at? You've never seen a hypocrite before? <laughs> but over handling, especially when you get a new reptile. When you get a new reptile, they are coming from a whole different place. The surroundings are new, the environment's new, the smells are new, and they are going to be a little freaked out. They are already stressed because of the way that they were either shipped to you or the way they were transported from the pet shop to your house into a new environment with new smells. And so it can really stress them out if you handle them too much, too, too often, too soon. So as much as you may want to sit there and hold them and play with them and spend hours with them because you know you just got them they're new and you want them to kind of tame down and 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 get them used to you handling them you gotta fight that urge so a rule of thumb that I like to use is I like to at least especially with snakes get them feeding first before I start to regularly handle them. So if you watch my last video about my BCC Boa Merlot, I made sure that she got a meal in before I took her out and started, started handling her regularly. Now I know when you get them and they come in a box or you're taking them from the pet shop to your house, you're gonna have to touch them to move them into their new enclosure and things like that, that's okay. I'm talking about regular handling after that. So taking them out for 30 minutes a day, every day, after the day you took them home. Like though that's going to stress out your animal, whether it's a snake or a lizard that can really, really, really stress them out and that could cause some health issues. I'd say give it at least a week or two or at least make sure that your animal is eating regularly first and then you can start handling them. Even if it's just a 10 minute session where they're not squirming away or trying to get away from you, that is a that that that's a great amount of time to have an animal out. So in my opinion, I think it's better to have short positive handling sessions with your new animal than it is to have long possibly negative handling sessions with your animal. Remember these animals are afraid of you and you got to build that trust. So not handling them too much in the beginning is a really good way to build that trust with them. Coming in at number four on the list of common mistakes made by reptile keepers is overfeeding. Yes, overfeeding is a very, very common mistake that a lot of reptile keepers make. I've been a culprit of that in past times. Uh, it can sometimes feel like you're not feeding your animal enough and that they need to eat more. You know, snakes once a week or even once every two to three weeks and you think that is not enough. How are they surviving off that? Your lizard, maybe it only eats twice or three times a week, but you gotta remember that these are cold blooded animals. <laughs> And so their metabolisms are different than a lot of mammals' metabolisms. In general, snakes' metabolisms are a lot slower than something like a lizard's metabolism. But as a cold-blooded creature, they don't need to eat all the time, especially snakes. Snakes do not need to eat more than once a week. 
most of them. There are some exceptions. My false water cobra, Nausea, when she was younger, I was feeding her twice a week because she does have a faster metabolism. But in general, the majority of snakes like spotted pythons, ball pythons, corn snakes, Burmese pythons, things like that, anacondas, whatever you, whatever you wanna say. Most of them don't need to eat more than once a week. And a lot of them when they're full grown, especially things like anacondas or Burmese pythons, you might be feeding them once a month. It's very natural for, especially snakes, to go on food strikes for long periods of time, months at a time. Ball pythons are notorious for going on food strikes. I've talked about that before in my videos. In the wild, these animals aren't eating every single day. That's a luxury that they have potentially in captivity, but that can lead to obesity. And obesity, it's never cute. You shouldn't want to encourage it, and you shouldn't want to promote it. You don't want your animal to be obese. You want them to be a healthy weight so that they can live a full and healthy life. When they're obese, that shortens their lifespan, and that gives them a whole bunch of health problems that you don't want to have to deal with or pay for by taking them to the vet all the time. Don't make your animal obese just because you want to take pictures of it and become viral or insta famous just don't do it so how do you fix overfeeding just put your animals on a feeding schedule you know have set days that you know you're going to feed your animals i know that for my snakes i feed them every sunday and there's specific snakes like cleopatra who get fed every other sunday because something like a blood python is likely to get obese if you feed them too often so she gets fed every other week Lizards, my lizards get fed on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. So you just gotta put them on a feeding schedule and if you have an animal that's already obese, put them on a diet. If, if you have a snake, a ball python that you feed twice a week or, or and it's super, super fat, then start feeding it every other week, you know, and go from there. So number three on the list is not using thermostats. And I know this, this is one that even I was like, that not using a thermostat isn't that big of a deal. I back in the day when I was first, you know, keeping reptiles back in the late 90s, early 2000s, I never used a thermostat. I don't even know if thermostats were around back then. I never used them. Slithery's alright, Franklin's alright, who cares? Now I've kind of joined the club of, I believe thermostats are highly important. When I first got Cleopatra in my blood python, I put a heating pad underneath her enclosure. And about a week later, I was wondering why she was never going on that side of the enclosure ever. She was always staying on the other side. So I took out the substrate and I got my temperature gun and I was shooting the temperatures around the cage. And when I got to the heating pad, it said 110 degrees. Now, blood pythons need a basking spot of about 85 degrees. So essentially, I was basically trying to burn my blood python by not putting a thermostat and regulating that temperature that was underneath her enclosure. So I put a thermostat on it, and sure enough, about two days later, she was right on top of that heating pad, getting that nice heat at the perfect temperature for her. That is why thermostats are important because you don't want to burn your snake. So it's just a responsible thing to do. So just make sure that, you know, with heat pads and things like that, try to use a thermostat. If, if you're not going to use a thermostat, then you need to make sure that you're checking that temperature, you're checking that hot spot every single day. So coming in at number two on the list is lack of UVB lights. Now, this doesn't really apply to snakes so much, but it does really apply to lizards. And it is highly, highly essential for the majority of lizards that you're going to come across. And honestly, for snakes, it can't hurt them and it can only benefit them. When it comes to snakes, a lot of people think that if a snake has a UVB light on it, its colors kind of pop a little bit more. I don't know if that's scientifically backed up or not, but a lot of my snakes, majority of my snakes have UVB lights attached to them. Some of them only have LED lights attached to them. And I don't know, I, I think that even though it's not required for snakes, I think it could still benefit them in a lot of ways. So that's why I choose to to use them for, for some of my snake cages. In terms of lizards though, I mean with the exception of things like maybe like leopard geckos and crested geckos, most lizards are gonna need UVB lights. And when I say need them, I mean they need them like health wise. UVB is essential to the, to, the, to the bone development in a lot of these lizards. So without it, these lizards are going to be suffering. They could be developing bone diseases and really suffering really bad and could possibly die a really painful death and nobody wants that for their pet but the main issue is that a lot of people as long as the lights working 
they keep using the light. And just because the light is on doesn't mean that there's actual UVB rays coming out of it. After about a year, the light is going to start losing its UVB output and the light will still work, but it won't be producing that UVB that is essential to your animals. So you wanna to try to change your UVB bulbs every six months to a year. A year would be pushing it, and I would say change it every six months at the very least. That's just my personal opinion, but that is highly important because I can't tell you how many stories I've heard of people thinking that because the light was on, their, their UVB bulb was working and their bearded dragon develops a bone disease because it all that time it actually wasn't getting UVB light. There's also, I think there's like UVB readers that you can get that actually tells you the amount of UVB that bulb is, is putting out. Those, I know they're expensive, but those could come in, to, in really handy. I don't have one, but I, I probably should get one because I've heard they, they, they're they awesome. I heard they work really, really, really well. So maybe I will get one of those. And number one, what I think is the most common mistake that people make when they are keeping reptiles is, drum roll please. <laughs> Impulse buying. Yes, I said it, and trust me, I am a culprit of this myself. So for those of you who don't know what impulse buying is, impulse buying is when you walk into the pet store to go get crickets for your leopard gecko, and you see that there is a Nile monitor sitting there on the counter, and you go, that guy is cool, I want it, I'm gonna get it right now and buy all the supplies for it right now. And you walk out of the store with a new Nile monitor without doing any research. That is what impulse buying is. To me, impulse buying is a mistake because a lot of the times people don't know what they're really getting themselves into because they haven't done the research ahead of time to know how to take care of this animal. They're just kind of going into the store, buying it, buying the supplies that the people at the store tell them to buy, and then coming home with it, and then possibly doing research afterwards. Sold to the gentleman from Quahog, Rhode Island. Congratulations, sir. What brings you down here to Louisville? I don't know. So a lot of times when it comes to impulse buying, people end up getting rid of those animals, you know, years later, maybe even months later, because the animal that they got wasn't what they expected it was going to be. And like I said, I, I've been a culprit of this because I know you walk into the store, you see some cool animals and you go, wow, I really want that. I don't want anybody else to buy it. I'm gonna get it right now and I'll deal with the, with the research later. But you gotta really try to fight that urge. My recommendation for trying to prevent people from impulse buying would just be to, to, to wait. And, and if you see an animal in the pet shop, Make yourself wait, go home, do some research. I want it now. My process takes about two weeks. When I'm thinking about getting an animal, it takes me about two weeks to make the final decision. I make sure I watch all the YouTube videos, I read all the care guides, and weigh the pros and the cons of having that animal and to, and to see if I have the space. So I just recommend that you take a step back when you see an animal that you like, a reptile that you like, and, and go home that night, do all the research on it, and then try to come to your decision. And if the main reason why you're impulse buying is because you're afraid that once you leave, if you don't buy it, somebody else is going to buy it, then ask the people that work at the reptile shop you're getting it from if you could put a deposit down on it or if you could put that animal on hold for a couple of days to make your final decision. A lot of places will do that for you and it's a lot better than just coming home with an animal that eventually you're going to be getting rid of because you weren't fully prepared for it. So that is it for today, you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope it was helpful. <laughs> I, I, I tried my best to just kind of put out mistakes that, that I thought were really common in the hobby. Leave a comment and let me know if you guys agree with this list, if you guys agree with these, if these things are serious mistakes that people make or if you guys think there are other ones that are a little bit more important. Maybe I'll make another video, a part two video on, on common mistakes. So let me know down in the comments. Make sure you guys like this video, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel and please, please, please share this video. So so until next time everybody, my name is Pierce LaValley, this is Simon, we are in Pierce's planet, and remember, it's all about the reps, baby. Peace.
Yes, overfeed. Yes, overfeeding is a. Yes, oh. Yes, overfeeding is a. Yes, oh. Oh my god. Everybody makes mistakes, and that is especially. I am here with my spotted pipe. Uh, reptile keeping. And because of all the. You know, basically be a whole. BBB, and they're, they're getting that new. Uh, I think it can still benefit them in a lot. Uh, in a lot. Uh, require UVB lights, but this does. Uh, uh, my recommendation to try. Uh, my recommendation for trying. Uh, 